Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Colonization. This is post-commentary on the missions that were conducted during the live stream on January 10th. Just a reminder, this is all in the Realism Overhaul set of mods for our Kerbal Space Program, so we're operating on Earth in the real solar system. The mod list is in the video description. However, I have made some custom configurations for certain engines and certain parts. For instance, for the M1 engine from the FASA pack, I've made a Raptor Vacuum engine configuration that is for SpaceX. This will be SpaceX's next generation engines. So the Raptor Vacuum is an upscaled methane burning version of the Merlin engine. And there's the Raptor SL, which I based off of the RD191. The specs I used are tentative. They're based on what SpaceX has said so far is that they have an engine that's about 2,300 kilonewtons and with certain ISP. And then I work backwards using certain tools that I have to calculate these things as well as a comparison to the Merlin 1D in order to get the relative mass that could be expected. Anyway, I went on to building an ISRU unit. The last time we tried an ISRU unit, I used exclusively Planetary Base Inc. parts, but that caused certain problems. And so this time I'm not using the engines from the Planetary Base Inc. I decided to use other engines and I made sure to put a drone core there and ba base most of it on the Mark II expansion pack so that things wouldn't randomly shrink on me and fuel flow would be right. Remember when we used the Planetary Base Inc. tanks and everything, there was a fuel flow issue that caused an imbalance and I couldn't work that out. So this was a way to get around that and I would test whether that actually works or not. So. Anyway, I do have a custom configuration for the ISRU unit as well. Uh, since this experience that I'm showing here, I've also adjusted the masses of the drills. I don't think NASA is going to send drills that weigh 750 kilograms. I think they'll manage to have drills that weigh substantially less. So yeah, and so we've got three tons worth of drills here, which is just ridiculous. But right here, I'm still using those. And of course, everything needs a lot of fuel cells. So I'm putting that. And the tail tank has the fuel for the fuel cells, which is hydrogen and oxygen. The engines I've used are uh, CC methane, uh, common extensible cryogenic engines burning methane and oxygen, and also the Super Dracos, which burn MMH and N204. But we don't have exclusively Super Dracos because, of course, we can't convert to MMH and N204. All we can do is convert to methane, oxygen, hydrogen, and, uh, of course, water and regular old oxygen, not liquid oxygen as well. So that's why I've configured the ISR Union 4. This is a test with hack gravity on in order to see whether everything is balanced. Everything was not. Good to find that out here. But, uh, so I decided to shift the engines around a bit. The Super Dracos do not have gimbling. The CC methanes do have gimbling, but I wanted to make sure it was balanced with just the Super Dracos. So here I'm also adding parachutes for Mars, and that is the goal of this ISR unit is to be a Mars miner, as its title indicates. So here I'm. This is actually not the second test. I retested it a few times. Here I'm getting some lag issues, and it has to be some mod because uh, we'll see this increase later in the video. It gets much much more severe. But something is going on here that uh, is causing unusual lag, even for me. Uh, so anyway, RCS on. It seems relatively balanced here, but not quite. So I take a good look to make sure the fuel is, is balanced. It is. The fuel is balanced. With all the engines on, it does have it does struggle. You can see it's maxed out pitch. Ultimately, the stream concluded that maybe it's aerodynamics that was causing problems, so I made some aerodynamic adjustments after unhacking gravity and bringing this back down. I wanted to test the balance of the parachutes here, and so I deployed the parachutes with hack gravity off, and uh, there you can see the results. So I needed to shift around the parachutes as well to make sure that was balanced. Anyway, uh, one other thing was that somebody recommended Thrall Controlled Avionics, and so I tried that mod after restarting the whole program. Unfortunately, I couldn't quite figure it out. Uh, well, you'll see in a moment. When I try and enable it, go and enable it, it says no electric charge. So something's wrong there, and I don't know what. So I decided I couldn't quite use that until that was figured out. And of course, I was in my normal sort of while streaming, let's get it on with it rush. So I put on an SLS, but I put unique boosters. These are Raptor boosters. They have nine Raptor SL engines at the bottom. 
and so we got to try this. Now this is generally a bad idea because we're talking about lighting 22 engines and of course there's going to be lag. And uh, here we go. So this is uh, unconventional SLS. It's got the SLS core and actually the conventional SLS upper stage which is for RL10C2s uh, or is it C3s? Anyway, the right engines are on there. Um, we had a little bit of a problem in that the engines I used for the boosters did not have a plume on them. And this is probably my fault. Remember I made a custom configuration and I didn't really check that out ahead of time. I proceeded anyway because, uh, well, I wanted to get this done. But uh, ultimately, for, for the sake of my viewers' uh, delicate sensibilities, I tried to hide the fact that we didn't have plumes on those boosters. So uh, that's why this camera angle, and also this camera angle. But yeah, uh, so checking out the performance of the methane boosters, it's an interesting idea. Might be better than using SRVs, and also better than using the Hydrolox engines on boosters, because Hydrolox engines take up a lot of volume, and so it's tough to make good boosters out of them. Anyway, off those go. And potentially, if they're using the Raptor engine, maybe we could, uh, could get, make them recoverable at some point. Okay, off go the fairings, and there's our payload. So the initial idea was to send this over to Mars, and we'll try and plot for that, but I, at this point, wasn't sure whether we had enough Delta V. Okay, continuing on in the the core stage here for RS-25 engines, burning hydrogen and oxygen. And we're getting to orbit. You see I had to pitch down to control the orbit. It's still going a little bit out of whack. We'll have a high apoapsis at the end. There we go, uh, 504 kilometers by 162. Alright, so I leave this be for now because there's also another mission we're going to be trying to transfer to Mars, and I'll use that mission to judge how much Delta V we actually need. You can see we have 4,103 meters per second there. The other mission that we have to transfer to Mars is the Mars Pair on the Kingfisher. And so I start plotting for that right away. And what I come up with is that we're going to need a 3,354 or so meter per second initial burn. And then a mid-course correction, or I guess it uh, ended up being about 3,500 meters per second on the initial burn. And then a correction of, let's call it 900 meters per second, that probably has to be changed anyway uh, after we do the initial burn. So that in order to get it close to Mars as you see there. So summing that up, we're talking about 4,400 meters per second minimum and the, the payload, the ISRU unit, does not have that. So I decided at that point to maybe just transfer it to the moon to test it out first. Okay, anyway, this is the Mars pair which we have worked on. Uh, we added the additional long distance antenna dish and uh, solar panel and now it is finally transferring over to Mars that is an RL60 engine which is more powerful than the RL10 and uh, slightly more efficient good gimbling uh, and better ISP well it's about the same ISP not not enough to make too much of a difference on the ISP mainly I put it on for the thrust and for the fact that it wouldn't cause too much lag because there's only one of them Okay, here I'm uh, correcting the mid-course adjustment and confirming that we will need more than the ISRU unit has, and we do. It does cost uh, cost quite a bit there. But anyway, the Mars pair is on its way and it will be scanning for resources on Mars. We do already have a scanner around the moon and I double check where the ore is because the ISRU unit is going to need to get to that, right? So we're going to send the ISRU unit to the moon to uh, drill for ore. Now it takes more Delta V to land on the moon than it does to go to Mars. Mars is an atmosphere to slow you down and everything if you can aerobrake. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into orbit around the moon and then we'll have to refuel the second stage over here, the second stage of the SLS. So I'm separating off the core stage here and then we'll be using the second stage with its 4,000 meters per second. You can see the the capacity of the SLS with the two methane burning boosters was 186 tons to low earth orbit, which is pretty good. And that includes this transfer stage. Okay, and ignition. 
Now, this is where I told you the lag was really bad, and it has to be some mod. Uh, somebody suggested this other mod to modify the warp, but uh, given the way things were going, it was uh, I suspected it was causing the problem, actually, because we had added this in, and then suddenly I have this colossal lag problem. But it didn't seem to be active, so I didn't know what was going on. Uh, it has not seemed to recur yet. I mean, I have my usual lag, I just don't have this ridiculous amount. So I don't know what was going on, it was something peculiar. Anyway, but uh, this burn continued, and so we're going to refuel this stage with the RL-10s. Once this gets to the moon, we'll have to send something over to give it its extra fuel. I don't know if that's the best thing to do, but it's the only thing I could think of on the fly. It's possible that from the moon we could still transfer out to Mars, and maybe that's a better thing to do instead of trying to refuel it so that I can make a landing on the moon. Anyway, here we go, our transfer to the moon. And shut off. Okay, a little bit of RCS brought our periapsis back, and we were on our way. So I've taken a detailed look at what the NASA estimates for an ISRU unit for Mars would be. And assuming you can fill up over 16 months, and getting the numbers right, uh, and you're trying to get 10 tons of methane and 35 tons of oxygen, and 5 tons of consumable oxygen, oxygen and a total of 108 tons of water, uh, this is assuming a long stay on Mars, uh, and uh, you know certain amount of recycling involved, uh, what you're going to need is a total mass of 3.36 tons. Uh, three tons of that is actually just the water acquisition. And then just getting the carbon dioxide uh, takes 120 uh, kilograms. A Sabatier uh, converter co uh, takes about 30 kilograms. Water electrolysis takes 33 kilograms. Liquefying the oxygen takes 105 kilograms. And liquefying methane takes 74. This does not include power requirements power you have to generate separately. The total amount of power estimated was about 40.2 kilowatts. And that's assuming that you're going to run this ISR unit for 16 months to fuel up for a future uh, Mars long stay mission and then the return home, right? So you're going to be uh, fueling it so that it can get back into orbit and also so that they have some water during their stay. So yeah, again, so the mass that they estimate is 3.36 tons, which is way more than the ISR unit unit in stock is, and uh, the drilling units, well, I mean, the big part of the mass is the water acquisition, which is, the, I guess you could say, drilling for water. And that's also the biggest part of the power requirements, that takes 24 kilowatts, which is actually exactly how much the ISR, is it the, no, the drilling units take, right? Or it was the ISR unit. I think it's the ISR unit that takes 24. Anyway, what we have here is the uh, probe submitted by a viewer. And this is just a communication satellite for Geosync. Uh, so that we could patch up some of our communication issues. And this was submitted by Bluegill. I decided to add some antennae to the Falcon 9 so that uh, as backup communications. But yeah, I didn't launch it this time because I didn't have enough time. After the, the lag we had uh, meant that the whole process of getting that to the moon took a lot longer than I expected. And also the development process of getting the ISR unit all nice and balanced was a lot longer than I showed here. Uh, there was a question about how much it would take to get into orbit around the moon of Jupiter. And so we already had a Jupiter probe on its way out, so I used it to measure that. And so that's what you're seeing here. I visit my Jupiter probe, currently on its way to Jupiter. And in the Jupiter system, I assumed we would get into orbit around Jupiter first. Uh, that was always the plan. That takes about 2,500 meters per second to get into a nice tight orbit. And there we have a nice little rendezvous with Europa. The trouble is that the moons of Jupiter don't perturb your orbit very much. Uh, unless you're very lucky. Or you have NASA-like planning abilities. Uh, so here at Europa, we're already in orbit around Jupiter, so it doesn't need to deal with that part. And we are going the right way around Jupiter. And I sh see how much Delta V we would take to get into orbit around Europa. Because uh, I think people didn't have the right idea about this. These moons uh, can't really compete with Jupiter for, for mass and gravitational influence. So once we're in orbit around Jupiter, we're going very, very fast still. And 
we need to uh, probably do quite a lot of flybys to slow down. I don't know how many we'll need, but yeah, we'll probably have to float by a lot of moons of Jupiter before we can actually get into orbit around one. Anyway, there you go. 11,000 meters per second it takes to to uh, slow down around Europa in order to get into orbit. And the question had been whether an ion engine could do such a thing, and obviously not. By the time you try and uh, you, you, you'd be going around and around uh, trying to burn the ion engine, uh, you know, because the entire orbit uh, is just a matter of days around Jupiter. The orbit through the Europa encounter is very, very short. So you'd need a chemical engine to get into orbit. Even if we manage to slow down using various passes around the moons and stuff like that, we it would still be going too quickly. You would still need to use something other than an ion, ion engine in order to get into an actual orbit, unless you could find an atmosphere to air brake at, of course, which is uh, would be helpful. But anyway, so that was just a little check I did right at the end of the stream. Not as much done during the stream as I would have liked, but yeah, that was how it went. So I'll leave it here and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.